What's up, everyone? Pittsburgh White Shorts coming at you with something slightly different. I wanted to go over the new Love Live cards, both the 10th anniversary premium booster that we got a while ago, as well as the upcoming Sif 2 Miracle Live set. Thought about doing a full set review. Didn't really seem like that was very apt, considering how I believe most people are going to purchase it. I don't think most people are going to go out and buy a full play set of just Sif 2. They're probably going to pick and choose to support their existing Muse or Aquars decks. Uh, in English and to sort of like improve those so we're gonna I went through I picked out cards from both the premium booster as well as cards from the SIF 2 set that su support both Muse and Aqua and then we're gonna go through uh, a list that you could possibly play if you just wanted to play within SIF 2 and uh, you are somebody who's planning on buying the set like that but I don't think that's gonna be super common along for the ride with me today is Paru hello it's Paru and we're just gonna jump right into it here. Uh, we're gonna start with the 10th anniversary reprints. So all of these cards are reprints. These are from the premium booster, both for Muse and Hogwarts, but there are some cards in here that we never got in English and I've had them divided by row. So the first row for each uh, group is the actual reprints, which we'll touch on quickly. And then the few cards we'll talk about a little bit more in depth for the PRs or volume two cards that we actually never got in english so we'll just start here real quick these first two we got here this nozomi and this maki are the color locked ozosos one for blue and one for green these were reprinted the maki level one combo which is a maguro on attack or not a maguro this is a uh, on reverse what is that that's mean what's the minami. minami yeah long reaching pretty far back here so it's minami gives a thousand power to the lane and then act... was years before minami huh also was years before minami what do you or mean not reaching Azusa. Back? Azusa, okay. th these ones but minami uh versus like maguro right that was that's the okay. right term maguro okay whatever and then you can act rest other characters on your board uh or herself if you had to to give one of your characters a thousand power pretty decent but slightly dated yeah. combo but you do got a reprint here with some nice new art uh the umi free fresh counter where you punch yourself and then free fresh uh which is cheap and very funny uh it seems somewhat counterintuitive but if you're all out you'll take that one damage for a chance to cancel they did reprint the we are a single light level two on attack pay one burn one which is a level two uh we were pushing damage at level two even all the way back then Crazy. You know, if you're playing that free fresh counter out eight, you're, it's actually compression. What? Compression. It, it's like new, almost neutral. Yeah. No, not new, not positive because you pay one digital. Oh yeah, you pay one. Yeah, you pay one. But clocking one. a clean card is actually you know Pretty positive good. compression. And then they did actually reprint both of the uh, decompression tools, so the Ellie stock swap as well as the Rin Fumio, uh, which is a true Fumio. Double back two. Yeah, that uh, card's choose fucked. two out double back too so you do have the big wombo combo uh for and if people sit down against old love live and they don't remember that these cards exist uh you can absolutely steal games from people with that and then the only card for muse from this that we did not get uh, i might be wrong here but i went through and i did double check is actually this coachery this is a pr that we never got it is just a self-type salvage brainstorm that gives your music character in the middle position of your center stage 500 power that's it uh, pretty unremarkable, but I mean, I'm pretty sure the other brainstorms, there's like the Rin brainstorm, but that's a search, right? Uh, it's pretty yeah. old, the blue one, so might not fit with what you're trying to do, so you have this. So, pretty unremarkable stuff here. Again, these are just reprints. Uh, it's a little bit more important for Sunshine, because Sunshine being a meta threat in English for so long, until relatively recently, we would say like years or so in the past, where it started to fall out of favor and get really power crept. Um, we did get a lot of reprints, unfortunately not for the Oz sub, but for a lot of the other cards. So we have the Hanamar Brainstorm, the Brainstorm that only hits on yellow, but when you trigger trigger Climax, gives something 2k. Uh, the Yoshiko Runner, which on attack gives any character 500 power, and then it is a Mill Runner. We have the Daya Ricky, uh, when it dies, you can pay one punch yourself to draw a card, and then uh, it prevails on play. Or what, what is this? It's a, no, it's a console. Console and a Raw Ricky. The Mari uh, coin flip, the blue card that people are notorious for trying to jam in their two color love life sunshine decks <laughs> because it can scry and help set up your burns, but at the opportunity cost of jamming a third color that uh, was never very consistent. Um, the Ruby mill counter and then the Yoshiko 
climax combo uh, that was always just played as a Musashi without the climax combo on a wind, as well as the Rico Fumio, one card Fumio, rest another character. You can also ditch cards to bump characters however much power you want by 2,500 per card, which is pretty nice. And then as for the new cards, these are all volume two cards that got reprinted that we never got in English because we never got volume two, is the Yo Free Fresh. So on play, pay two, Free Fresh. The Mari Drop Search, which is actually a card that was on the ban list. That card's cracked. Yeah, this is just a four more other draw drop and a drop search uh, was really, really powerful, especially when volume two had standby in Japanese to both filter your hand and set things up, which made that deck very consistent for the time period. If you think about this profile now, it sounds like kind of normal, uh, but back when this was printed, this was like absolutely insane overloaded utility. And then we have the Daya Yuko, which is on play. If you have another character gets 2K and then during the turn it's played, when this card gets a reverse, you can pay one and rest one of your other standing characters uh, to search your deck for a character. So it's a way to plus without having a climax, which might be something you want to do for like a more French build of Love Live Sunshine. And it's nice that we finally got these. Uh, but just wanted to get these out of the way first. I don't think there's really that much to talk about with these. Um, probably the Mari. The Sunshine stuff's a little bit more important. This like brings the cost down. These cards uh, exist and reprint. Uh, but obviously they did. still got to buy your Mirai Yeah, all, all your extra booster stuff, unfortunately, did not get reprinted. So... Um, you'll have to shell out for that. But for the rest of these, you get some new updated art from the mobile games, which is always very pretty. But moving on to the actual Miracle Live stuff, we're going to start with Muse. Uh, this is stuff from the Sift 2 booster. We're going to just go color by color here, start with green. And we'll talk about everyone, sort of kind of like we do in set reviews, but a little bit fast. A lot of these cards are pretty simple, uh, not a lot going on with them outside of a few, of course. Uh, so the first we got here is this Nose and Me Brainstorm. Uh, it is a level zero assist in front, and then it is a uh, self-tap salvage brainstorm. Pretty powerful, for considering the power level of old Muse. This is probably what you will be playing in the future, provided that color isn't a big problem. These cards are cracked at level zero. Yeah. Like, you just turn random utility, and even like the turning the Oz into like a 3K means that it might just plus for no reason and like it plays into the fact that it's a brainstorm you don't want to play it on the first turn obviously unless like the power right. matters you want to play it to respond if you stay at zero to like pay out a triggered climax or something from the previous turn uh, so plays into that as well got this nico which is a double filter it's an on play console for music characters and then you can also discard a music character to draw a card uh, so it is that good cowgirl profile uh what do we call this this has another name as well uh it's arisu arisu cinderella yeah girls. arisu from cinderella girls yeah so got this arisu cowgirl profile uh very good little filter for muse we have this level zero climax combo where you uh bounce this card back to hand so long as it's in your center stage to spawn a level zero character from your waiting room uh, and then that character gets 500 power until end of turn. So it's kind of reminiscent of the ZLS combo, the shot combo. But uh, that card was also a brainstorm. This card is just a beater. Uh, a little bit of a very weird, um, you know, bounce back combo that it doesn't have a more Why impactful does it gain power effect. If it's going to leave. Yeah, it's... Uh, the, the manatees, I think, fucked up on this one. I don't think so, they uh, put the two there's balls like a, correctly. There's like a bonus fuck up on this card, too. Mm -hmm. uh, the way that they've like always had it, right, was that yellow could be any girl. Green was like the upperclassman. Red was like the middle. Yeah. And then blue was the younger ones. But Honoka is supposed to be like in the red crew. Yes. Why is this card green? It's well, <laughs> so weird. Yeah, it is weird. This is a Honoka. It does combo off bar, so the fact that you'll be able to, you know, bounce this back sure. to your hand and then that play it on the next turn, that's good synergy. It's just the fact that this is a, like, 3k beater on turn makes, like, absolutely yeah, no enough, sense man. at all. Uh, this card what the hell would you even else. ever play off of this? I don't know, but it wouldn't be something within Mono Muse. It'd be something within the Greater Sift set, probably. Yeah. I don't think you'd uh, try to play this in Muse, but it does exist. Try to do something with it. I'm sure it's better. Than anything Honoka Life had before. Yeah, it is a double R. I was gonna say no, that. Pretty bad. 
Uh, we got this nose of me here, which is on attack. If you have another character, you can sack one of your other characters to reveal top. And if that card is level one or higher, put that revealed card in your hand. This is a level zero, zero Ooh. two, uh, which I think is, this actually is actually pretty, pretty good. good. Yeah, this card's actually yeah. pretty good. I, I would most certainly play this if I was playing old Muse. Uh, that is mm -hmm. a good way to just get some random extra pluses for cards that are probably under spec and yeah. unfortunately having to crash or just throughout the game just getting you don't some even extra care value. if you're like sacking off some like shitter mm -hmm. anyway. and spoiler alert you did get one standby uh in muse so this could dig you towards a standby trick we got this one one knows me uh when this card's reversed Reveal the top card if it's a level zero lower character. This could pop back to hand. And it is a clock Adachi. It's Spider-Man, but it hard removes instead of just reverses. Uh, which is actually Yo. really nice. This uh this profile is actually really good as an Adachi. Just being able to recur it, flame it down turn after turn to deal with your opponent's threats. As the Adachi is gonna die anyway, it's always gonna become reversed and leave the board and leave an open lane. So you might as well coin flip to get your card back. Well, the one, unlike Spider-Man, it doesn't give a character plus one level. No, it's so not. So you can't do brand. the Aria thing. Yeah, you can't Aria people, but are, that, that's a little that's a little over spec anyway. So still still a good card. Uh, mm -hmm. We have the Ellie. This is an anti-change counter to waiting room, but it does have that uh, pretty decent pay three overall sack of character on stage cost. Gives you a little bit of extra utility on your anti-change counter, as well as just being, you know, a modern anti-change counter. I believe there is a ditch two one. Uh, somewhere available for English for Muse, but you can pick and choose depending on whether your deck has stock issues or hand issues. Play the one that works. <laughs> this Ellie level three. Uh, if you have singing together Honoka Kosaka, which I believe is this card here, the level zero uh, in your clock, this card gets a minus one level in your hand. And then when you play this on stage, until the end of turn, this card gets 3000 power and the following ability. When this card is placed in the stage in the waiting room, you may return this card to hand. Um, so until the end of your opponent's next turn. So when they kill it, you can bounce it back to hand. Uh, and then on attack, if you have the bar here, you can burn your opponent for one. Um, probably not good enough to be played as a level three finisher on its own. However, you could early play it, but early playing it means that you have to play this card, which means you kind of want to play the climax combo. A little bit of a uh, weird deck going on there i don't know how uh good that actually is it doesn't sound very good but um that is something that you could do i guess at trouble, least it's all on bar trouble girl. at least it's big right 14k with the climax that probably clears Last turn oh no only yeah turn. and yeah it only gets Dude, the i feel like 14k doesn't ability. matter though and like anti-change is like such a thing now mm -hmm. anti-change is uh very ubiquitous especially in a meta it always has been but we we say this over and over in a meta where overlord is a meta threat um it's expected that pretty much everybody is packing anti change counter because one of the also, best like hope strategies just force them to side um love live already could like play the kotori that burns on attack at level two and that mm -hmm. card also combos on a bar like or yeah. you, you can choose for it you to can combo choose on a bar. to play a bar yeah right so like this is pay two this, stock to do the same this thing this is like kind of redundant because that kotori if it's attacking a level three it's gonna literally be the same power as that ellie true so like a little the, weird this card's kind of pointless yeah when the kotori is this but like less restrictive less restrictive and then and to then round it out here die. for green we have this nico uh it's an 11-5 that's got that weird 10-5 power line and then on play you mill top two uh and burn your opponent for x where x is the number of level zero or lower characters that you mill doesn't oh. even hit on climaxes it's like a this uh, is your payoff for playing the honoka yeah for playing all the level zeros for honoka that's your payoff don't think it's a very good one but nonetheless uh in terms of off finishers you know even if you're in green you probably just play the old nico clock kicker that's probably better Oh wow! I did not know that was a feature. You can click on that. And what? Make How it did big. you do that? You just click on it, make it bigger. What? Click well, a new feature unlocked. New feature unlocked. Um, all right. So moving into red, we have this um, scientist Umi, uh, where on play you can um, you you are forced to mill two, and if there's a climax, you can discard a card to salvage. So free salvage if you get a climax. 
and then it is also just a normal drop salvage so uh it's one of these slightly better than the old saya that only gave i believe that card gave power right if it hit but it's like a force mill um double salvage it's like the uh the dog from ruby um oh so. this is an uh, this is just i from love live nijigasaki oh yeah that's true the i was this card. Uh, it was an expensive pr mm -hmm. but as a uh, muse character but mm -hmm. doesn't matter if you're playing mono sip um, this movie is actually kind of cool. During your turn, as long as you have two or more other characters, this gets 2k and the following ability. When this card's battle opponent, it comes reversed. You can discard a card to look at top three and add anything. Uh, so it hand filters oh. from the top three to maybe get another climax. And then it has red shift. This is pretty cool. It has cool art too. Yeah. He's in the dojo. Yeah. This one's super cool. It's like an auxiliary level one. If you can support it. Yeah. Uh, I know that like I've, I've seen a couple of people messing around with like sif 2 uh like mono sif 2 for english and the level ones eventually do become like kind of color hell trying to play every auxiliary level one that you want to so the fact that this is red will either be uh, a total non-issue or hell for you to work in so it's gonna depend on what else you can play but for mono muse definitely probably something you want to play um we have this coterie which is if you have a climax oh. down it's a blind stalker yeah um, okay. Which is also a good auxiliary level uh, one here. Uh, two one Umi. Uh, this if the, on the top of your clock alarm uh, at the beginning of your climax phase, you can pay one, ditch one, burn one. That's cool. Uh, at any time, and it is a global thousand assist. Pretty cool. Uh, we got this three two Honoka. When this is played on the stage from your hand, if the total levels in your level is nine or more. Choose one of the following two effects to perform it. You can either heal the top card and gain 2,500 power, or choose a climax in your waiting room and return it to your hand. So, modular effect, provided you have nine experience. And then it also has an alarm effect. It's on top of your clock, and you have four or more total music characters. At the beginning of your climax phase, you can draw two, drop two. So, a little bit of a climax assurance, provided you're meeting that pretty hefty experience requirement. But... When you do clock it to meet that uh, experience requirement, you at least get an effect on that turn uh, if you wish. Poetry early play, just a four or more stock healer, uh, swings in at 10K. Super simple, but uh, a super simple card like this that's sort of like more online with Modern Weiss is exactly what uh, Muse pr would want. So the fact that you have this uh, is probably gonna be really nice for anybody who's playing Mono Muse still. And then we have the Honoka finisher here, which is on standby. So if the number of other music characters you have two or more, this gets 1K. And then at the beginning of your attack phase, you can uh, sack the climax, so long as you have another character, to stand this and gain 2K until the end of your opponent's next turn. And then it has inherent on attack, ditch one, heal. Heal to waiting room. Uh, so the fact that this is on standby, you can bring it out, attack with it immediately, and get a heal, and you get a big fat body. 12-5 uh, base for your opponent to deal with. Uh, pretty good, especially considering you only have one standby available to you in Muse. The fact that when you play it, you immediately get the body and can immediately swing is actually pretty good. It makes it a lot more playable for only having four standbys. Yeah, this is seem this seems fine. Yeah. And because you're... Doesn't mean though that you're not yeah. using a climax that's not going towards a finisher. True. This kind of yeah, like, like you is have your finisher stuff. Yeah, you got off finisher stuff. I was gonna say you do have that like quote unquote old set privilege where you might have like old crack targets that if they were played for free off standby might be pretty good. So it's definitely something you want to look for and probably play with uh, if you're looking to play uh, Muse with some of these new cards. And then wrapping up with blue, we have um, Boolean Orange Hanayo. Uh, <laughs> when this is played, if your opponent has one or less other characters in center stage, you can uh, just kill it, cost zero. And then when this damage is amazing art. When damage dealt by this is canceled, pay one, draw one. Yeah, the art is very, very funny. Why is she in orange? It's like her thing. Or something. Oh, I, didn't, I thought it was I rice. It was that. just food in general. Yeah, she's I know she rice loves girl. rice, yeah. Okay. We have this Rin, it is on play. It is a Rize for alarm or shift cards, uh, which is very funny, but it is modular deck speed. If you just think about it like that, you play a couple shift cards. Uh, a lot of old cards that you might want to play have shift. I mean, we saw here this 
this Umi has shift. Uh, this other Umi also has shift. Look how right next to it does too. Mm -hmm. As well as Honoka. So you have like some alarm and shift cards that you'd want to play. The fact that it's just modular costless deck speed is probably good enough for uh, patching an old Muse deck. And then on play, you can choose one of your characters and give it a thousand power. So a little bit of extra power buff. That is level zero Maki. It is literally a vanilla coin flip. If it's zero or lower, uh, you can return this card to your hand. Um, so that does hit on climaxes. Level zero or lower climaxes. So it's about 50 50, depending on how your deck is built. Modern ways. You know, they got eight climaxes, uh, probably 18 plus zeros. Probably going to be about 50 50, just as most coin flips are. We got this one zero Hanio, which has experience two or higher plus 4K uh, on your turn. So swing it at 7 5. And then on play from your hand, you can rest another of your standing characters to choose a card in your level and a card in your waiting room, exchange them, and give one of your characters a level. So this is literally the uh, Yui from Sword Art yeah. uh, LN. A good card when you need to hit experience, which uh, the Honokas dictate that you have nine, which is pretty, means a level three at every single level. So you're gonna wanna hit that. We have this Magi, which is a Mogoro this time, not a Manami, but it does require experience too for its power it does not require experience for its combo which is an important thing to keep in mind uh, that the experience requirement only for the extra power uh compared to this to the old maki which was also very small uh your baseline is just that you have an on attack combo on the same trigger that uh you know or on a better trigger i can't remember if that maki's book or not it's old i imagine it's book uh, but you have, uh, but it might be pants. It's been a long time. What card are you referring to? Sorry. The uh, Maki Minami. Is that on pants or is that? Oh, on book? it can. It's the same thing as the coats. It's the same oh. climax as the coatery that burns. It's all weird. So it's a either a, a okay. bar, a pants, or a door. Okay, so it is a pants. But yeah, the baseline, even without the experience, is it's gonna be like the same power because it gains a thousand when you attack and Magro for a character. And then if you have experience, it'll get even bigger. So it'll be 55, 65, 75 fill all of its requirements and it's on pants uh unfortunately for sif 2 these client th this happens a lot in this set the climaxes and the character are like the same art um it's very lazy unfortunately but um at least the art is good it's the good art from the mobile game so it's not that bad that it's doubling up and then last two cards here for muse we have this maki it is a level assist and then as long as you have experience five or higher, you can rest this to give one of your characters a thousand power and on reverse bottom deck. So it's like that Aqua assist from Konosuba. We've seen that profile pop up again and again. Assist gives some extra power and the uh, hard removal effect. Good for getting rid of sticky cards that have uh, encore of some kind or that you just need to remove off the board to deny some kind of on death effect. And then lastly, we have this Rin level three, which is a healer on play. And then as long as you have experience nine, you can on attack, pay to ditch a music character to gain 3,500 power and on reverse, uh, you re repeat the damage or you can not repeat the damage. You can restand this card. All right, tripping over <laughs> my own tongue here. You got it. But yeah, so cheap restand provided that uh, her damage is canceled, um, but you do have to pay that cost up front. Uh, so you really are only gonna swing this into like a small deck state where you're pretty confident that uh, Rin's damage is going to cancel. But some nice buffs to Mono Muse, uh, not anything too, too crazy. The more crazy stuff here, or not crazy, but uh, things that you might see at a regional a little bit more or something like that, or maybe a shop challenge is uh, the Love Live Sunshine card. So Love Live Sunshine actually got quite a big shot in the arm uh, with this booster with only the uh, cards for Aquars. Um, so we're just going to start here with yellow and it'll be uh, instantly uh, obvious that uh, Sunshine definitely got the uh, good end of the bargain when it came to new individual cards. Uh, we're going to start out with a banger. This is Ruby Ricky. Um, pay one, put a music character from the waiting room on the bottom of your clock, which will let you set your clock conditions mid game, post clock. A uh, lot of extra utility for Love Light Sunshine, no matter how you build your deck, that's a very powerful cost to have. And then it is just a search trick. You search a level one or lower, helping you get into your level one combo. And then on attack, give any of your characters 500 power. So a uh, very good card for how Love Life Sunshine tends to play. Uh, the concessions that it has to make to get its stuff off. Ruby slots right in. 
And then we also have this Hanamaru. It is just a Fuka Zero. So on death, discard a card. Look it up for the top four. Add a level one or higher card. Send the rest to waiting room. Let's you load up your waiting room early and just dig for either your level one combo, maybe an Azusa. This can loop into Azusa because um, you have a level one yellow Azusa that you can play in Love Life Sunshine, as well as just, you know, hitting things into grave that you need. If, say, you don't have the... Uh, clock condition you can mill it into grave or something like that main phase and then throw it in uh mid main phase with the ruby ricky and still get a plus out of it so you're not expending your hand other level one uh yellow stuff we have this hanamaru that can exchange a character at the bottom of your clock with a character in your waiting room letting you set that uh early play condition for free uh with that rico 2-1 that has to be in your clock to early play your chica yo package that uh, love live sunshine is so well known for has some other extra power effects, but that main clock swap uh, effect is what we're after. A modern level one combo in this Yoshiko, as long as you have experience two or higher, this gains 2k power uh, during your turn. And then provided that she wins her lane or there's nothing across from her, um, provided that you have experience two or higher, you can check top five and add a music character. And this card gets 1500 power until the end of your opponent's next turn. So this card mills quite a bit, getting you to a good refresh timing, um, which you do have Azusa to do, but having this on a uh, modern climax, like a choice, especially in a deck like Love's Light and Sunshine, that plays a lot of higher level cards with a lot of soul triggers, means that this choice is effectively just as good as a door for you, while giving you that extra ability to add extra stock. And just having a modern on spec level one combo, even though it does need a reverse, it does gain a lot of power. Swing in at 7-5, sitting cross turn at 6k. I think that most Love Live Sunshine decks are going to just play this, even though it's not selective, just because it's more on power line. I don't know if that's completely out there. I know Sunshine does want to hit specific cards, but I think playing a card like the Chica Bomb in Modern Era is like a little bit of a grief. You probably have to play something a little more generally better like this. Yeah, I mean, that card seems fine. Yeah, it's not the best level one combo, but uh, it's far better than anything Sunshine currently has. And then for yellow level threes, we have this Ruby, who is a global 1500 assist. She heals, and then she has an alarm effect where at the beginning of your main phase, you can pay one ditch one to free fresh your deck. Um, so you can just clock this and just get out of a bad deck state. Then we have this Hanamaru finisher on play. You can on play from hand or deck. You can pay one to search your deck for a, another copy of her and put it on the stage. So for four stock, you can get four copies. And then at the end of this card's attack, so long as you have this choice, you can do one of the following two effects, heal for free or pay to burn two. Not a bad uh, finisher if you have to like run smaller counts this, you have to shave it. Um, you do want to run a lot of level threes for your go so that you have more hits, but the other combo that we'll look at has a pretty steep deck building requirement, even for Love Life Sunshine. Uh, so this might be the one that you want to play. Moving into red, we have, or before we get to red, we have this one green card for Love Life Sunshine, which is this Chica, which is on turn 3k and is a on reverse Rize. It's fine, uh, but you have this Hanamaru. I don't think you really need to play this card, uh, especially considering that there's no other Sunshine green cards at all. And then Yo, which is just a vanilla Rico, even though you have real 2 1 Rico to play in Love Life Sunshine. This is probably a card that you'd want to play at a one or two count just to give you that good costless filter in the early game to increase your consistency. You have this Chica, which unfortunately for Mono Sunshine, you don't have standby, but this is one of those bounce back cards where when you play a Climax, you can return this card to your hand, give a character 2K and surveil the top card of your deck, as well as having shift so that you have a more reasonable chance of having it pretty much every game at a slim count. If it goes to clock, you can just grab it and uh, have it for every time you play Climax. You have this Rico counter, which is a free fresh. Might be something you want to opt into other than the usual Ruby Mill counter. And then level three is for red. We have this Rico. It's an early play. It gains a thousand power and on reverse memory during your turn. And then it's also a check X, which can help you dig into cards that you need. And lastly for red, the Chica finisher here, which is uh, on play heal. And then again, this is one of these experience nine cards. On attack, you can pay one ditch one, provided you have experience nine, to get 1500 power and one of the following two effects. Burn one, shuffle back three, or just burn three. And it is on a door. You'd be thinking immediately that like, yeah, this is exactly the kind of combo you want in Love Life Sunshine that runs a bunch of level threes. 
However, you don't want to remove those level threes from your deck because of how Yo works. So that kind of pushes you towards the Hanamaru kind of, but both of them are better options than what you had before, which was just an empty climax that did nothing. And then blue, we have Mari, who is experienced to a higher 500 power in front. And then she is a self-tap search brainstorm. This is your best option for a standalone brainstorm in Little Life Sunshine now, because all the other ones are tap two or can do something like only grab yellow. We have this Daya, which is a, uh, what are they, a JC, 4K JC on turn. Probably one of the best JC profiles that we have. It is a double rare. Um, just like the one in Like Echo, this lets you try field very aggressively, which keeps up with Love Life Sunshine's usual aggressive stance on how it wants to take the game. It wants to take the game fast and close it out with early O-Burns. This level zero Conan, um, which is a Vimax combo. On attack, if you have another character, this gets 1500 power, so it's three, five, and then when it attacks, with this pants climax as long as you have two or more other characters this gets 1500 power and when this card's frontal attack it bounces back to hand so it's a level zero what's this profile called again in a bit since i played one of these when, when it's attacked when it's frontal attack bounce back obero obero yeah so it's a level zero obero that gets quite a bit of power that's three five four five with climax then 6k there's a lot for a level zero but it is a level zero and it has to live to be able to bounce. So I uh, don't think you're going to be playing this one. At levels one and two, just two cards here that I highlighted. This is a cost bomb. And then it's on the top of your clock at the beginning of your climax phase. You can pay one, ditch one. So look at top three and add any card at the beginning of your climax phase. So it can dig you into a climax if you really need one. And then we have this Mari, which is a 2-1 Adachi, but it also has Alarm, where you can give one of your characters uh, on reverse bottom deck to hard remove cards. So two different ways to hard remove cards uh, in one card, which is pretty nice. You don't really have access to a 1-1 Adachi uh, at all in Love Life Sunshine, so you have the Yoshiko that forces you to play Rock, Paper, Scissors, or this Mari to play. And then two blue level threes, uh, we have this Kanon, which is on play, Search your deck for a music character, and then you may ditch one to uh, choose a character in your hand with level equal or lower than your level and spawn it to the field. Uh, and that card will come from hand. So you can search a card out of your deck, then discard a card and spawn it uh, for just two stock, which is very nice. And that card will get any of its on play abilities because it came from your hand. Also has an alarm effect, fits on top of your clock, beginning of climax phase. You can discard a climax to salvage a character. So climax ditch salvage from your clock. And then this Daya, which is just on play heal. And then when you play it, you could ditch one, so long as you have another character, to mill your opponent for 10 cards in main phase. Might be a funny tech if your opponent has a small deck with a lot of climaxes. Overall, I think Sunshine definitely made out a little better than Muse in terms of individual cards. Um, mm -hmm. The Daya absolutely will go in the new deck. The Brainstorm absolutely will go in the new deck, as will the Ricky and the uh, Fuka Zero. I think you play the Yoshiko. Some people might disagree, but I don't think it matters too, too much because you do have um, two new options for level three finishers uh, that at the very least are better than playing a uh, empty climax, uh, even if you only play shaved down two or three copies of either of these. Um, they're probably better than playing something empty. And to take a look at a, something uh, that's using these, let's take a look at what Love Live Sunshine might look like using Sift 2. Uh, this is just something I threw together in a couple minutes. To absolutely not final. Absolutely nothing uh, specific. No like play testing or anything. But just to give you an idea of what something can look like. We got the Ricky. We got the JC. We got the good old Kanan. We have uh, some Hanamaru for some early mill. Rico at level zero for some early filtering and the new brainstorm at the usual 15, 16 level zeros you expect from Love Life Sunshine because want to jam higher cards for Yo. We have an on color climax combo for our Ruby, which is always an issue. Uh, be having a dual color level one with our only real deck speed tool in the deck being a uh, yellow card when we played Chica, which was red. So that made that a little awkward, but now we have the same color same cards we can rip our first deck apart get that good refresh timing for rico as per usual free fresh counter bouncer because playing a bouncer in the current meta is pretty good for yo uh as normal three chica as normal the rico one of uh fumio as normal and then i'm playing the hanamaru but obviously you could just straight uh switch this out um for the uh, chica if you'd like 
uh, choice versus door in this deck with this many soul triggers. Pretty much every card after this second line, half your deck in terms of characters is soul triggers. Uh, so you shouldn't have uh, any issues playing a choice with this kind of lineup. Any thoughts yeah, on it? Just fine. looking at it. Yeah, it, it's just kind of like a early smoke build, smoke test build. You don't have like a turn one card, right? Not really. Uh, you just kind of like drop anything and then go again I with guess, Daya. Yeah, you play like the, the Fuka and mm -hmm. hope that's good enough. You could change okay. this around. You could play the old runner, things of that nature. Really play with whatever. It's not like blue is a primary color for the deck. Um, yeah. But you're in it enough now with these cards to actually play some other cards if you wanted to. If you're playing this that mills, you don't think you need four odds. So you can shave that down, maybe play something a little weird. And for all the people that are going to buy a playset of Sif 2 and not update their old <laughs> decks, which, I don't know, let us know in the comments if that's what you plan on doing. You plan on getting a full playset of Sif 2, if that's just the the environment, how English goes, you feel more comfortable just getting a whole playset of something. Um, even if you really only plan to update news uh, or awkward what you have. Um, this is maybe something you could build that plays into the Shia Rico finisher. Uh, which is actually really powerful. Paro and I have played the uh, deck that this like originally comes from. Well, I guess the original is Kaoriko, right? From Revy Starlight. But the one that saw the most competitive success was uh, Hat. Uh, they're not the same the thing. They're not completely the same, but similar. Um, yeah. This is a lot more similar to um, Imari to Hat Girl um, from Decapo. Uh, this type of combo is uh, very, very potent. It kind of rolls to the next character when this card you pay a cost when this card's damage is canceled you burn two and then that ability rolls to another character on your board for free which might be another copy of shiriko which means that if your opponent cancels that one they burn two burn two goes to the next character if that's a shiriko they cancel that one they burn two burn two burn two so that is a, a lot of damage if your opponent cancels and then obviously if they don't cancel that's a lot of damage going through um, we do have a bouncer to support that, uh, which is very typical of how the Capo also played the combo, as well as some things unique to uh, Sif, which is this Lanzu here, which is a uh, Musashi for um, just a Musashi, and then it gains soul. Um, so you either shove this through and your opponent eats a big swing, or um, you have that extra bit of damage on top. And you can give the Shiriko ability to Lanzu, um, and ha that will work exactly as you expect. They cancel one of them, uh, all these effects go off uh, in whatever order you So, you can uh, get a little bit of extra crazy nutty finishing if you go for that. We're actually playing the Maki because it is the uh, most normal combo that we can play that provides us a little bit of deck speed and plussing. Again, we don't need that experience to do the combo. We only need blue, um, but we do have blue experience cards in here to uh, help fulfill that as well as, you know, we have the Ruby so we can level a higher level card and then uh, throw blue in our clock with Ruby after that to get another copy of our Maki and then go off that way. Um, this is a slight tweak of a deck that did well uh, during WGP last year. Um, so just kind of took that and moved around a couple things um, just to give you an idea of what you could play. Like I threw in this level one drop searcher, which I thought was neat going through the set. Uh, there's some cool set stuff here, like this eye uh, that can uh, swap out at the beginning of your main phase if you clock it. And then you can swap it with any card from your waiting room immediately before you start your turn. Uh, which can help you set colors or maybe set alarms or things of that nature. Because um, you do have some alarms here. It's like the uh, Shizuku as well as the Mari that you might want to recur. But yeah, pretty simple. Again, sorry if you were expecting a full set review for this stuff, I apologize. Um, I've been pretty busy as well as this set, you know, not super, super in high demand. I don't think that's a crazy thing to say. What do you think, Par? I don't think I've heard too much clamoring um, for uh, the Sif Every time set. I look and see what's coming up next, I remember it's this, and I go, oh. Yeah, oh, this is coming out. And like we said, I think it's going to be a little bit more common that uh, people buying this product are looking to update their old decks, particularly Love Life Sunshine, I think, is what most people will go after because that deck was so popular in English. Um, mm -hmm. or Muse for people who have been playing Weiss a long, long time uh, who want to give that set a shot in the arm because they love the group. Uh, I am a well, a pretty old uh, original Love Live enjoyer. I might go and pick up some of these cards when this comes out. Um, but I sold off Sunshine long ago. 
so I won't do not have that one anymore. But if you want to just yeah, grab a deck to play, I mean, I have seen some people in the sim like just spectating in Discord calls play uh, play some Sif two only stuff, and it seems fine. It's another one k one deck that's perfectly serviceable to throw in the pile. But I don't think outside of this finisher, it really does anything too too crazy in terms of a set. There's not much other uh, X factor going for it, which is a uh, kind of the norm for the high power stuff that you expect these days. There's got to be something extra going on. Yep, I agree. Yeah, in the close here, in terms of upcoming content, uh, this is kind of the thing we threw together because we couldn't get the JoJo set review uh, crew. We couldn't get Tanner on the call. I'm not going to fire that one off until we have uh, myself, Paru, and Tanner all available to have that one done. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. I am still going through house closing stuff, uh, but hopefully that is uh, nearing the end and I can get back to a normal content schedule. Nice. Um, so Yay. hopefully, I, yes, I will soon be a landowner, finally, and then my life will be over. I will have nothing left to achieve. <laughs> That's what they tell me. After you own land, it's all over. Um, so, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this one. A little bit of fast one out there. Give you guys some ideas for what you'd want to do with Love Live, whether you're updating your old deck or you plan on uh, playing something with uh, just these Sift 2 cards. You can nab a playset for cheater for something like that from your... Uh, local love live enjoyer that wants to die for foils but with that pittsburgh weisswort signing off and we will see you all in the next one